Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Colts cast. We are here to talk about everything and anything Indianapolis Colts. My name is Eric Smith, co-host of the Colts cast. Alongside me, as always, I have co-host Jamal Lawrence here. Yo, yo, yo. Jamal. Man. What a game. What a game. What a game. Uh, guys, please be sure to follow us on social media. Twitter handle at the Colts cast. Instagram at Colts cast. Check us out. Check us out on there. Uh, we got our YouTube up. Recording on there as well. Just search the Colts cast. Subscribe to our channel. You know. We want to do live sessions in the future. Check us out. Check us out. But anyway, what a game. Boy. Four lead changes. Tons of penalties. The return of Matt Ryan. A Colts win. <laughs> For Jeff Saturday's head coaching debut, the Colts take down the Raiders on the road 25-20. to 20, Up to 4-5-1 and one on the season. Who would have knew? Who would have thought? Not me. I tell you that much. <laughs> Not me. That was a thrilling game, though. I I enjoyed a lot of it. Yeah, I agree. It, it was a good game. It was a fun game to watch, and it was nice to see the energy. I felt like everybody was, you know, pretty excited from the very beginning. Um, and what better time to to have all these changes come and to try to get the ball rolling when you're playing against a team that's 2-6, and six, who's worse than you. So... Why not? Why not pull out your bag of tricks and try it all? And and Jeff Saturday, he did that. I mean, he lied to us. He uh, he pulled a Jim Irsay. He told us five days ago that Raymond was going to start and and Sam was going to start. And then pregame, Matt was under center with the with the uh, with Ryan Kelly. And I said, "All right, what's this about?" And sure enough, they announced it right before game that he was going to start. Um, but it's all good, you know. That's what it's about. That's exactly what it's about. But I feel like Sam was a little salty because when Jeff walked past them when they were stretching or whatever, he kind of side-eyed him. So, you know, call it what you want. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna do what he thinks is best for the team, and I'm not mad about it. I'm definitely not mad about it. Uh, I just found it interesting because it keeps. And I'm not gonna go down a long rabbit hole of negativity because we got a W. But it keeps me wondering about what was all going on with Frank during this time because Ooh, again. Yeah. This is another change where it was said that, well, Jim wanted to sit him down. And, I mean, I know Jeff and Jim are cool, but would Jeff be that ballsy to be like, I'm not sitting Matt, I'm going to start with him? Like, I don't see that happening. So just another piece of the puzzle of making me wonder, is it the part of that CYA where he was just trying to cover himself to make sure he could ensure yeah. his job? So it was. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right because it, it seemed like Sam, Sam Ellinger was the starter up until mm -hmm. about 10 minutes before the game. Mm-hmm. And then we saw Matt Ryan take the field as a starter. I don't, I don't know what happened during the Frank Wright era. It, it, it does seem like your theory is true. I, I do think Jeff Saturday has the ultimate say, though, in which quarterback mm -hmm. should start. And Jim Mercer, he's not on the field calling plays, you know, developing a game plan. So, either way, look. I know we've been we've been hollering about tanking season, but it was refreshing to see the Colts go out there on the road and get that W. Especially oh, yeah. with Matt Ryan back under center. A lot of good things to talk about with the offense. A lot of good things. Matt Ryan, 21 for 28, 222 yards, 7.9 yards per attempt. He had 8.2 at half. So they, they were moving the chains with Matt Ryan. One touchdown, no interceptions. Only took one sack. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. I really do. Um, Jonathan Taylor, 22 carries, 147 yards, one touchdown. We saw that 66-yard run. Oh, baby. My goodness. Felt like an adrenaline shot going through my veins. We haven't seen that in the longest, the longest time. A lot of explosive plays in this game. A lot. On both sides of the football. Um, both teams were... We're making great plays, but mm -hmm. you know, Colts came up, came up sharp. Even Matt Ryan, yeah, what yeah. thirty nine yard scramble? Yeah, what? And turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like the linebacker. You know, I don't think he would have known that Matt Ryan was going to take off on that no. open hole. Yeah, because he went right back into coverage when he saw him step up, got about to the line of scrimmage, pump faked it, and then he just took off and. I mean, Matt Ryan, he, he's not the fastest, but, you know, when you get a head start like that and no defenders in the vicinity, 
It's just a good game. That was awesome to see. Yeah. It, it was. And what I think I liked the most about that was he committed to it. Once he took off, he knew he was going. He didn't hesitate, you know, hesitate, he didn't slow up or, you know, pump fake. He just said, all right, I'm going for it. And that's like, I mean, I think that was a confidence boost not only for him but for the team as well because when you need a big play like that, I, I did not. I expected him to get the first down and get out of bounds. I really mm-hmm. did. And he kept going. I was like, oh, all right. You know, I'm not mad about it. So it was it was a good little thing to see, and I'm glad he committed to it. Um, and I, I, I'd be, you know, I'd be a liar if I say he, I feel like he's going to play with a chip on his shoulder for the rest of the season if he gets to start. Uh, you know, I'm sure he didn't enjoy being benched. Um, and I'm pretty sure we talked about this injury. We talked about it having a longer effect, more than two weeks of, yeah. um, of sit, you know, sidelining you. So, again, makes me think that the injury was more of an excuse for them sitting him. And now he's like, all right, well, let me go ahead and show up and show out since I'm back in it and I got a chance to do what I can do, which is good because that's what we need. Obviously, like you mentioned, uh, we talked all about tanking season, um, but it is refreshing to get that win. I think that the rest of the season will be a whole lot harder than today was. So it was nice for them to kind of get the get in a little groove um, because I, I don't know what's going to happen for the rest. But it was it was fun, exciting to see JT break off a big run. O-line was looking pretty good. Glad to see they finally decided to put Matt uh, Pryor on the bench. I said, sweet Jesus, thank you. It's like you. a head coaching change. Yeah. It's like an offensive coordinator getting fired. Yeah. It took everything. Everything. From Matt Pryor to get benched. <laughs> My goodness. And when Braden Smith went down, I said, no, he's about to get a I chance. Know. I was glad he got up and ran off the field because I said, if he gets in, it's over. But no, yeah. it, it was it was fun. It was fun. There was a couple of injuries, and we'll we'll get into that too. But yeah, I I don't like seeing Matt Pryor. I thought Braden Smith played well. Will mm-hmm. Fries, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, back to that Matt Ryan rush. I mean, it, it set up like you said, built built some momentum. Even though Michael Pittman on the next play fumbled it, hustled back <laughs> yeah. and recovered it. But then Paris Campbell on a slant, thirty five yard touchdown right after that. Super strong after the catch. Super fast. Um. And, I mean, he led all receivers today, Paris Campbell. Seven catches, 76 yards, nine targets. He killed it. He, he killed was balling. It. Yeah. He was balling. I, I don't know what he took this preseason, but, man, dude. Is, and, I, and, again, I guess it's a little hard because we haven't had a chance to actually see him play a full season. So maybe he had, he's always had this in his arsenal because I know at Ohio State he was good. Oh, yeah. But, um, but you know, it's tough just because when you don't see it, you're like, dang, Paris is showing up today. But I mean, he's been now. It's starting to happen every week. So it's not showing up just for a week by week. This is, I'm starting to think that this is his, his true consistency, and I'm and I'm glad because that's what we need. That was an explosive play, like you said, because I thought he was just gonna take a tackle and go down, and he turned yeah. the half the burners on and just boom, boom, phew, boom yeah, light speed, so, yeah. I like. He had I like he had a bad drop in the game though. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a tough catch, but it it hit his hands. I usually say you got to make the catch. Got to. Um, someone else we saw, it, it It seems like, is Matt Ryan's favorite tight end target, Kylan Granson. Oh, yeah. Tight end one? He, he's it? Especially with Jelani Woods out? <sighs> yeah, I mean, shoot. He was he was all over the board. So, yeah, I think he could be. I really do. I, I was never really sold on Mac from the beginning. Um, you know, we talked about that earlier on during the season. Ben I was said never that. truly sold. Yeah. So it was, it was it was nice to see Colin out there because <laughs> he was trying to get out there and, and get some catches, man. And we know Matt; he loves tight ends, so why not? Why not? I, I'm, it was great to see it. Yeah, Matt Ryan loves to you know he'll he'll have ten different receivers targeted the whole game. This game only six, you know, kept it you know a little narrow. Uh, Alec Pierce wasn't really involved. Yeah. Now he always gets his one one target down the sideline, you know, for a potential 20 yard grab or DPI did not get it this time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the rookie what's his name. Weber got the best of him on that play, but, um, Michael Pittman, you know, he absorbed about half the target share as well. Well, 30 to 40% with nine targets, seven catches, 53 yards. He did his thing. Um, it seems like we're not going to see the Michael Pittman, probably a thousand yard season like we have before just because we have other pass catchers now that are stepping up to the plate. Um, Kiki Kuti, that should have been his last catch of the season. (laughs) (laughs) 
because I, it, it was unfortunate. I, I will say, but man, you gotta you gotta take care of the football. Um, it, it did get like need out of his hands, mm-hmm. but still, it, there's a reason he didn't get targeted another time for the rest of the game. Overall, I really, I really liked seeing this offense play today. A lot of explosive plays. We took advantage of a bad defense on the road. I like it. Even the play calling, I was fine with, especially at the beginning of the game. We had a QB sneak at the goal line to set up for our first touchdown. Frank Wright would have never ran that. No. No, no, no. Jeff Saturday, first challenge was successful. Like Things like that, you, I, I, I was liking to see all of that happen. But offense, they, they balled out today, I would say. I mean, maybe a few miscues on some things. Like, I remember we were on our four or five yard line on that deep punt. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was second down. We had a wide receiver screen to Paris yeah, Campbell. To Paris, yeah. And Paris had to come back for that pass. And if he would have caught that, it was probably going to be a safety. And that would have changed the entire game. So really glad he didn't catch that. It was ruled incomplete. Although big Q. <laughs> yeah, he was ready. He yeah. The ball off was ready to go. At least, like, yeah, he, he might need to get some snaps in the backfield. <laughs> that man was bulldozing it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I like the offense today, Jamal. I really did. Um, it looks like Matt Ryan is, is our QB1, and seems like he should have been this entire time. I know he was making a lot of mistakes in the beginning, but just just the two-minute drill he had before the, before halftime, I mean, things like that, you don't that, – that requires veteran experience to me. I don't think Sam Ellinger would have been able to pull off what he did today. Just my opinion, though. Yeah, no, and that's fair. Uh, I mean, I, I, can, I, I can argue that all day. I'm going to play devil's advocate here because now I'm going to go back to – injuries and guaranteed money because we know if Matt Ryan plays he's going to get this guaranteed money and if we're going to be giving him this extra 12 and 12 or 18 million whatever it is and we are going to plan on him starting again next year or what does that mean for draft purposes are we going to because no quarterback none of these young bucks who are going to be a first round quarterback is going to want to come in and have to play behind somebody that's, that's just because that's not the way it works that's not a second, third, fourth round quarterback. Sure, why not? But none of these first string or first round quarterbacks want to come in and sit behind somebody. It's just not gonna happen. Um, so I don't see. I, I, it's I, all the time, man. Yeah, I, I guess. But if we have a chance to get a Hendon Hooker or a or a or a hmm, Will Levitz, but you know, just speaking on that, just a, a really good quarter, a really good college quarterback who we know is proven from their college career can come in and be a day one starter, they're not going to want to come in and sit behind a starting quarterback or a veteran quarterback. I just don't see it. I, I really don't. Um, we look at the problems that Trey Lance had in, in, in uh, San Francisco. I mean, the whole Jimmy G situation, Jimmy guess got basically got lucky that I'm going to say lucky, but it's for, Unfortunate for Trey Lance, he got hurt. But fortunate for Jimmy G, he got he got hurt because that gave him a chance to get another run again. Because it was just tensions. I mean, we see the same thing with with Ryan Tannehill. You know, I, I don't think that Malik Willis is better than Tannehill, but I, he, Tannehill made it clear that he didn't want any part of you know trying to help him out to grow his NFL career. And I know those two are like just two out of thirty thirty other teams that are out there. But I just don't think that a a really good Power five quarterback is one going to go, gonna come into the game and sit behind a 37 year old Matt Ryan and try to collect experience. They don't. They don't want to do that. Um, so I think that it should be interesting to see because I I I would be one to venture out and say if Ballard remains GM, if we can continue to win out this season, and if Matt Ryan can all of a sudden turn around these nine touchdowns or interceptions and maybe only get two or three more for the rest of the season, maybe one or two more fumbles for the rest of the season and just completely turns it over. And they say, are we going to commit to him? I could see Ballard saying, we don't need a quarterback right now. We can shoot for a second, third, late, you know, late quarterback and go for something else different in the first uh, first round or maybe early in the second round. And then we're back to square one because then we only have a two-year contract for the quarterback. Uh, And I know that seems like really far in the future, but I also want to just remain, like, remain 
I don't know the word I want to use, but true to what, to what we've been preaching week in and week out, you know, I, 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 I can, I can just see how one or two great wins can turn the whole thing around and people will go back to the, well, we don't need to see any change. We're good where we are. And then we're up the Creek come week 17, but that's just, well, we, you're right. We still need a young QB of the future. And does this change Chris Ballard's mind on should he spend draft capital on a first round quarterback for 2023? I still think you do. In my opinion, um, Matt Ryan is only going to get a little older. Uh, you're right. This could sway our opinion, but we've also gotten a lot of mixed signals just from where we want to go in the future with Matt Ryan, with this offense, with our coaching staff, things like that. So I'm not sure where the needle is, is pointed to now. Um, but I do know, I mean, whether you get drafted in the first round or not, uh, you probably don't have a choice. Like they're not going to, if, if we are retaining Matt Ryan, we're going to start Matt Ryan. Like no matter what, like that you don't just bring in a rookie quarterback. I mean, yeah, Joe Burrow, I guess, did it for the Bengals, but like Patrick Mahomes still sat his first year. Um, Tua Tunga Viola didn't play until like half of the season. And um, Justin Herbert, yeah, I mean, most quarterbacks to me don't start day one. Now, they will start down the road, middle of the season, maybe end of the season, things like that. Somebody gets hurt. But in my opinion, let the young man sit, let the young man get situated and acclimated to the NFL. We especially, if Matt Ryan can fix his mistakes of the past, let's let Matt Ryan be Matt Ryan. Let's let him be the veteran quarterback we need him to be, and let's hit, let him mentor, which I believe he will, versus Ryan Tannehill, our next quarterback. Whether it be Sam Ellinger, whether it be Hennon Hooker, whether it be whoever. But, I mean, I to me, a lot of quarterbacks, they do sit the majority of their first year. No, that's fair. I mean, that's that's fair. And I, I like that you use those names because we're talking about one who was coming off a national championship in college. So, of course, it was probably anticipated for him to start in Cincinnati, and they really didn't have a choice. And Mahomes, he had well, Alex Smith was in front of him, who was still a proven quarterback at the time. Um, yeah, so I, that, that's fair. That's fair to say. That's fair. I guess I just think of, from what I've seen historically, that people get – just as fast as people were Fairweather fans for saying over the past three weeks, oh, it's the end of the world, we need to all jump ship now, then I think if we get another win, they're going to be like, well, life's good. We don't need to worry about any of these other problems. We can figure this out once the demise happens again. So I, I don't yeah. know. I, I, I would just feel oh, more yeah. comfortable if I we knew might, that. We might be having a whole different <laughs> conversation right now if the Colts would have lost this game. Yeah, right, Played right. horribly, and we would have said, you know, where Will Levis at? Where exactly. Bryce Young at? Exactly. But Matt Ryan, but no. under a new head coach, new play caller, this offense looked alive. So, yeah. It did. It did. And and, and I'm glad it did because that's what we need. A young guy, 30-year-old play caller. That's He's going to be a risk taker. He's going to be a risk taker. I mean, we saw Jeff was a risk taker for the two-point conversion. Even though he didn't get it, he didn't hesitate Twice. to say. <laughs> yeah, he didn't hesitate to say, let's go for two. And I do think that's where a a not so longer moved player from the game would do it. I mean, I know Jeff's been out of the league for a while, but we look at Reich's tenure out of the league. He's been out for 20, 30 years versus Jeff, who's been out 10, 11 years, however long he's been. You got more of a like a, a drive or a little more get up. You're not going to play as conservative. Um, and of course, with a young guy like he has in there. I mean, why not? What Really, this is the perfect time, like we talked about before. It's the perfect time to experiment, so why not go ahead and do everything you ever wanted to do? Um, because the worst-case scenario is people say, oh, we still suck. You know, so why not go ahead and, and throw it out? But I, I did enjoy seeing the excitement that the team had. Um, and, and I would venture to say that I can only imagine that a lot of this or some of it had to come from just the whole culture change around the team for – what's happened over the past week and a half or so, two weeks, because people are going to be excited whenever they see a new coach come in. They may be excited whenever they see a play caller is going to come in and let them do what they want. So I, I was glad to see that. I don't know. I was glad that kind of everything played out the way it did. Even if we would have lost, I would have honestly said that this was an all-around much better game 
uh, and it would have been okay. Like if, if Gilly, which I know we'll talk about in a minute, if Gilly would have somehow just managed to let Devontae catch that ball, it would have sucked to lose, yes. But, I mean, it was a hell of a game the entire time. So Right. It was, like I said, thrilling game. Yeah. The two-point conversions, I felt like they had to go for, though. Uh, I think both times we were up by five. You know, go up by seven instead, instead of six. You know, that changes the game. They can tie it up with an extra point. That's fine, but they don't take the lead. So I feel like they were put in that situation. They were forced to go for two uh, on both those times. We got a touchdown. Um, Stephon Gilmore, oh, are we getting right into the d defense? This is the segment? Go ahead. I know Segway, you want to talk segment. about him. I know you want to talk about him. Oh, man. Look, Devontae Adams, that man was cooking everybody the entire game. I mean, I don't think any – any defender could stop him really because they figured it out i guess in the second quarter they were like oh we have Devonte adams we can give him the ball he's the best receiver one of the best receivers in the nfl and yeah he cooked julian blackman he was he's forcing missed tackles for kenny moore uh it just he was having a day uh how many yards did he have Nine catches for 126 yards, 14 targets. Yeah, he was getting a monster target share. That's who Derek Carr was looking for the entire time. No Darren Waller. But fourth and six, Stephon Gilmore, 1v1 versus Devontae Adams. Gilmore knocks it away to end the ball game. Gilly Lot. Gilly Lot, man. New nickname should be Stephon Clutchmore. <laughs> I mean, th this is not the first time he's clutched at the very end of the game, is he not? That's true. Most That's true. important addition. Am I wrong? Uh, you've been preaching that since day one. He is a... F oh, he's so good. He's so good. And there was a lot of contact on that last play. But Devontae Adams was also... He had his hands in his face and stuff like that, too. So they just let the let the boys play. Stephon Gilmore got the best of them. That's the end of the ball game. But defense... There were a lot of stars on defense today. Grover Stewart was being a menace. Cookies. Always been underrated just with the stars on the defensive line that we have, like DeForest Buckner, who stepped up today. Man, it it was a good day, at least for the D-line, for, for some parts. And DeForest Buckner, he had half a sack, along with Unique Ngakwe. Although I feel like I mean, Unique would have never got that sack if Buckner didn't get there first. Yeah, but you're right. They, that That's how they grade it. Um, you know, Gilmore, two, two pass deflections, but Buckner had that bat down. Then he got the sack right after. Zaire Franklin was all over the field, as always, looking like a missile. Just uh, Bobby O'Karake in coverage. Uh, I, there was a lot of good. Kenny Moore even made a great stop at the beginning of the game. Of course, he got burnt on another play, but <laughs> I seen the hero there. I, I thought they played well. Um what you think? Yeah, no, nah, defense is both their ball, and they're they're doing a great job. I was nervous because I know Josh Jacobs, man. He can he can turn it on. He can turn it on. So I was nervous to see that. I figured they would be a, oh, I knew they'd be a little one dimensional with the passing game because no D Waller, no Hunter Renfro. So that was pretty self explanatory. But Devontae, I mean, it just felt like Derek Carr had way more pressure on him than he anticipated having, which is good, which is good. You know, he didn't get hit every time. We didn't get a lot of sacks. Two sacks total, like you said. One for Big Grove and then the half uh, for Buck and, and Yannick. But I, I thought that Derek Carr or Derek Carr made a, a couple passes where he was just just kind of trying to get rid of the ball and putting it in the air to whoever could get it. And and Devontae, he had a great game. He, he really did have a great game when, overall. When was Derek Carr pressured? I thought he got pressured a couple times. Couple. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Why well, didn't? Did I say yeah. the whole game? No, no, no. I was okay, just wondering I was gonna, because no, I was sure. a man threw the ball thirty-eight times. I think he literally got pressured a couple of times right, because well, that <laughs> man had a clean pocket <laughs> on like every play in the second half, and I was getting so mad. And you know what happened, right? Quitty pay went down. The, yeah, you're right. He did. And our he did pass go down. rush just looked soft after that. I. So when Quiddy Pay went down, I, I, Derek Carr, he just got so much time to throw it. I guess at the beginning of the game we were getting to him, but man, it just he, he had so much time. And if you get five or six seconds to throw the ball, you're yeah, you sh 
you're going to complete the pass 90% of the time. So you're Right. No, you're right. You're right. He shouldn't. I guess we technically only did have five QB hits on him, so not a lot. Not a yeah. lot. Um, so, yeah, that's fair to say. Uh, but de- defense defense did all right. Overall, they did all right. I, I wasn't mad about it. Again, I wouldn't. I would like to see us get some kind of turnovers throughout the game. Um, but, again, that's something where it shouldn't be expected every single game. They held down the fort. It was nice to see that we actually had a chance to – defense had a chance to play a little more comfortably because we were ahead the entire game or, almost, yeah, just about the entire game. So I feel like they had a chance to relax a little more than what they normally do where they're constantly on the field. Um, but I, I would just like to see – and, again, selfish, but I would like to see at least a turnover – at least a turnover just to kind of turn the tides a little bit to make it we don't get those anymore a, yeah no no you don't get them anymore just to see a little bit more of a of a of a ball game um i'm, I'm glad that we were able to just figure out a way to hold Devonte to what he had because I, I just know he could he had a crazy first half last game so i was anticipating him to go off again this first half of this game or the entire game in general um so i was grateful to see that but i i really do think that it would be nice to see us get a turnover, and because can't I can't even I, get that anymore, man. Our I turnover know. margin per game is absolutely atrocious now because we're always turning it over, and we're mm-hmm. not, you know, or we're always giving it away. We're not getting any turnovers on defense. It sucks. So yeah, we've we, we've lost that from last year because we were one of the best in the league. Yeah, yeah. In that we were department. tied for first, weren't we? I think uh, so. The Cowboys, yeah. I think so, now we're in last or close to last, something yeah. like that. But it's, it's story of all stats. <laughs> <laughs> but um, overall, man, I, I thought it was a clean game from the Colts mm-hmm. on both ends of the field, and we didn't, we we also had just balanced play calling too, man. I mean, Taylor got the ball twenty two times, Matt Ryan threw it twenty eight. I thought it was pretty clean. For for we got the debuts from Parks Frazier and and Jeff Saturday. Yeah, it's a win, right? Oh yeah, it's a win. It's a win. I think the only thing I was right about in this entire game was Chase missing one field goal. I said he would go two for two for three, cause I, but I said we'd only get six points. But I said he had missed one. So that's the only thing I got right. Everything else oh. in the game, I was wrong on. So <laughs> yeah, I'm can. glad I was wrong though. I'm glad because that that that's how the W came. I was wrong. Yeah, I would have liked him to hit it, but uh. I guess he can't hit every every field goal. Yeah. I was calling him Mick, Mick Automatic, but <laughs> as soon as I tweeted that, he ended up missing it. Hold one. my beer. Yeah, and <laughs> yo, I thought, man, in the fourth, when they were throwing in Mac Hollins, I was like, the last thing I want to happen is let Mac Hollins cook us up. Mac fucking Hollins. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it, they kept force feeding Vontae Adams. But yeah. I don't know where this kind of <laughs> like my thinking is is very off week after week with the Colts and how I want to proceed. Like on one hand, I'm like, get the higher draft pick, you know, look for the quarterback of the future potentially. And then on the other hand, I'm like, it's nice to see the Colts win in a thrilling fashion. I I don't know what to do here, Jamal. I don't know which side of the fence you're on still, but we're four, five, and one. I think we're mm-hmm. what two and a half games behind the Titans yeah. now. Yeah, we are. And playoffs in sight, right? <sighs> no, um, <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, you messed my mic up. <laughs> Let me change my mic back, boy. You got me heated already. I don't know why you over here spitting this <laughs> whack knowledge to <of> people. <laughs> no, I, I definitely want to still. I definitely want us to still worry about getting a quarterback because, for one. We've already talked about the rest of our schedule: Cowboys, um, uh, Steelers, Eagles, I mean, Eagles. Yeah, we play the Eagles. Yeah, we play the Eagles. We do. Damn. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not, I'm not too thrilled about. It. We put up a, a hell of a fight against a team that was worse than us. So that, that's what I'm gonna say on that. So yes, would it be good? I want to see us fight every game, but, but I don't want us to, all of a sudden, try to sneak out seven wins. And again, you get to the playoffs, you lose in the wild card round. All of a sudden, we go from having pick number, I don't know, 12 to pick number 21. And then we're back up the creek because we don't want to trade down. We're going to get rid of the first round pick to get two second round picks and or a second and a third round. And then we just go down from there. So, no, I don't want to see that. I'd rather it's just hang tight right where we are. Darius Leonard's are, or Shaq Leonard's already on win. IR. He's on IR. He, he can, his season's done. He knows it's done. JT would have been on IR had 
Had Reich been here, he'd have said my season's done. So, nah, let's just go ahead and charge it, keep it moving, and, and we'll worry about this next what year. What if we beat the Eagles, though, at home? Hey. What's he going to say then? Hey, I'm going to say it was great to see. I'm going to say oh, it's playoff times, baby. Hey, just because the Bills lost two twice in two weeks don't mean it's playoff time. <laughs> <laughs> that don't mean anything. Because you still got to get through the Chiefs. You still got to get through the Titans. You still, I mean, you got teams we can't. Man, one game at a time, man. I know. I I know. I agree. One game at a time. But I also just want to, I want to stay, you know, I want to stay truthful to myself. That's all. I'm just saying, if we beat the Eagles. Yeah. The the that only undefeated wild. team in the NFL. I don't that know. That changes. Now I know that's not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> but what if it does? What What do we have them in three weeks? Is that right? Or no, it's three weeks. Oh, it's next week. week. Eagles are next week. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. GG. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. My my time was way off. All right. Yeah. No. 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 Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Shoot. Yeah. We'll We'll see. But I'm celebrating our win tonight for sure. Look, go Colts. Go Colts. Go Colts. Shoe, baby. Oh, yeah. Look, that's going to be it for us, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Colts cast. We are live on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any platform you use to listen to podcasts. We will be back next time to give you some more Indianapolis Colts content. Y'all, take care. Keep it easy. Take care.